killing people. Two, two, one, four, one, two, three. I like good pussy and I like good tree. Smoke so much weed, you wouldn't believe it. And I get more ass than a toy and see. Well, after all the interviews, TV spots, and social media posts, Black Adam is here. And I watched it. I'm going to be breaking this review up into two sections. The first part will be spoiler free with my overall thoughts on it. And then the second part, I'll discuss a few spoilers. Got it? Good. Let's get into it. These big nuts. So Black Adam stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Black Adam. And after 5,000 years, Black Adam is awakened and released from his tomb in modern day, where he starts enforcing his own version of justice on the evil mercenaries that have taken over his country and are oppressing his people. And by doing this, he attracts the attention of the Justice Society of America, who wants to stop him. And of course, Black Adam isn't going to let that happen. So after a nearly 10 year wait, how was the movie? Well, I enjoyed it, but I'm not going to lie, there are definitely some issues and things that could have been done better. I'll go into more detail about that stuff later, but for now, let me tell you what I enjoyed. And really, it's most of the stuff that happens after Black Adam enters the movie about 10 to 15 minutes in. That's when the fun begins and the movie really finds its footing. The Rock basically plays himself again, but I like The Rock so it doesn't bother me too much. But yeah, he's just playing like a more serious version of himself. But without a doubt, when he starts letting loose and fighting all the evil military guys and the Justice Society, it's a whole lot of fun. And that's really what I wanted to see. That Man of Steel level of power and destruction, you kind of get that here. I find the entire middle section of this movie to be really enjoyable, and that's because of all the action sequences alone. When this stuff is happening, you can tell that this is what the movie wanted to do the entire time. Show you some badass comic book movie action, and it does that pretty well. It's funny that I mention Man of Steel because there are definitely a few times where it feels like they're mimicking Snyder's style, like by having these shots that make the characters feel huge and grand. And there's also a lot of slow mo here. It feels like it's trying to capture that same epic feeling that Snyder's DC movies had. You know, where the character actually feels like a superpowered god, and it's pretty cool when that stuff is happening. But of course, the Snyder fanboy in me thinks that it's not quite as good or effective like it is in Snyder's movies. But regardless, several of these sections do look really cool, and the music is pretty solid as well. It uses a few licensed songs at times, and it's pretty neat, but I'm more so referring to the actual score. It's pretty good. It still isn't as big or as epic as I would like it to be, but it's still pretty solid. It has a nice blend of rock instrumentals and hip-hop inspired tracks, so I enjoyed it. So when they're fighting, showing off their powers, destroying stuff, and throwing down, the movie is a blast. It hits that fun popcorn flick vibe, but sadly this is where my list of compliments end, and now it's time to dive into stuff that I didn't really enjoy. He was a squirrel who had big nuts. For starters, the beginning of this movie is a huge exposition dump, and it gives you a lot of backstory about Black Adam, an evil ruler, a magical crown, some wizards, and goddamn, it's a lot of stuff. Then it goes to modern day, where we follow his mother looking for the crown so that the oppressive government that controls her country can't have it. Then, of course, this is when Black Adam enters the movie. So the first 10 to 15 minutes feels a bit choppy with a lot of exposition, but once Black Adam shows up, it drastically improves the whole movie, and that's when the fun begins. And this is when you start getting all that crazy fun action that I told you about for the middle portion of the movie. Just getting there felt a little choppy. Another issue was something I was concerned about when I saw it in the trailer, and that's the humor. Yeah, there's quite a bit of it here, and I don't think a lot of it lands. There's actually a few times where they say a joke that's really similar to Guardians of the Galaxy. Remember how Drax doesn't know what a metaphor is? Well, they do something similar to that a few times. And there's also a few moments where they interject a joke in the middle of some pretty serious scenes. And I don't really care for stuff like that. So for me, personally, half of the humor just didn't work. I think I chuckled a few times, but I also remember rolling my eyes. Of course, that's more like a personal taste thing. I'm not the biggest fan of like forced humor in comic book movies, so that could be just me. Another Another concern I had before it came out was the amount of characters it's introducing. You have Dr. Fate, Hawkman, Adam Smasher, Cyclone, and of course, Black Adam himself. That's quite a bit of characters and, like I feared, they don't really go that much into any of them. Besides Black Adam, of course. The Justice Society is fine enough, you get the gist of their powers, but Adam Smasher and Cyclone really are just pushed to the background, while Dr. Fate and Hawkman are given the most attention out of the JSA. But even then, it's not a whole lot. The main focus is still on Black Adam, which isn't surprising because, you know, it's his movie, but the other heroes are just kinda there, and this sadly results in them feeling underdeveloped, which becomes an issue towards the end, which I'll talk about in the spoiler section. But as it is, the characters are okay. Underdeveloped, yes. But at least I can say that I didn't find any of them annoying, so I guess that's a plus. And the last thing I'll mention is the climax. I thought the final act was a bit rushed, with an extremely underdeveloped villain that doesn't show up until the last 15 minutes. The final battle itself is fine, not as good as the action before it, but the villain is just so damn boring and dull. There's no real build up to him. I wish I could tell you his name, but I really don't know it. I think they say it once in the movie. He's like 2017 Steppenwolf levels of bland and boring. I think the conclusion and ending of the movie itself is fine, but the final battle wasn't nearly as good as the stuff in the middle section where Black Adam is just wrecking shit. Oh, and there's some spotty CGI here and there, mainly on the big bad evil dude at the end. He looks rough as hell. But for the most part, it's fine, but there are several scenes where it could definitely be touched up, like Hawkman's wings in several scenes, and there's a few times where you can clearly tell in the background that, yeah, this is a green screen. For the most part, it's fine. There's just a handful of scenes where it doesn't look the best. Now, taking a step back and actually looking at the movie, it feels like it was supposed to 
supposed to be like two and a half hours or something because there's a lot of exposition in the beginning that they rushed through. Like I feel like some of this stuff wasn't supposed to be like a voiceover exposition flashback, you know? Like maybe this stuff was supposed to be like the first 20 minutes of the movie to establish Black Adam and his backstory, but then they realized that probably took too long to get to Black Adam. So they crushed it all down, chopped it up, and did some voiceover stuff instead. But you also got the stuff like the Justice Society and the mother and son characters who feel really underdeveloped. I mean, they're all pretty serviceable, but I wasn't blown away by any of their characters. They all hit the just okay serviceable status. With the movie being like right at two hours, it feels like they had to rush the setup to get to the good shit. And then when the good shit is over, they realize that it's almost at the two hour mark. So they better introduce the big bad evil dude real quick so they can have their final throwdown in the movie. That's just kind of how it feels like to me. Before I get into spoilers, let me give you my overall final thoughts on it. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, several things are underbaked and a bit rushed, but when they're fighting, showing off their powers, destroying stuff, and throwing down, it's really a blast. Like I said, it hits that perfect popcorn action flick vibe when all that stuff is happening, and that's all during the middle section of the movie. So for a little over an hour, it's a lot of fun, and I was really enjoying the big epic fight scenes in action. The ending was a bit rushed with a tacked on villain, but once it's all said and done, I found that I enjoyed myself. I wouldn't call it great, but it's okay with a lot of moments that are pretty good, and overall it's a pretty entertaining popcorn flick and it seems like that's what they were going for because the most entertaining parts of the movie are right in the middle section when it's all just going nuts with the action. And because a lot of stuff is so good I and mean, I really enjoy The Rock, I'm willing to look past several of its missteps. Now this might be just because it's still fresh in my mind and I just saw it in the theaters. So in time that might change, but as of right now, I found it to be a lot of fun. There's just several things that really bog it down and stop it from being really good. So overall, it's an okay movie that you can have a lot of fun with. And now it's time to talk about some spoilers. So if you don't want to hear them, I suggest leave it now. If not, well, let's continue. His nutsack was so big. Now, I really only want to talk about a few things that happen towards the end of the movie. And the first is Dr. Fate's, well, fate. Yeah, he fucking dies at the end. And it felt a bit underwhelming and annoying at the same time. Underwhelming because, like I already mentioned, most of the characters aren't that well developed. So when it was leading up to it and it was all dramatic and Hawkman's really upset, it didn't really have the impact that it should have had because these two weren't explored that much. So I didn't really feel their connection or friendship. So his death was underwhelming because of that, but also annoying because I was hoping to see Dr. Dr. Fate explored more in a future film, but that's not going to happen now. So I don't think Dr. Fate's death was handled that well or had the impact that was intended. I was more so annoyed than sad, really. And he's taken out by a complete nothing of a villain that's only introduced at the very end. So I guess I might as well talk a little bit about that too. The movie sets up this magical crown in the very beginning and the evil military guys want it, but you never really have a concrete villain for most of the movie. And they don't really explain what the crown actually does or how it's used, at least not until moments before the evil guy actually uses it. And it does exactly what they explained it would do. So that ending villain was lame as hell and had no real build up. It's like the guy who turns evil is there, but he's not really doing much. Yeah, so this guy's like 2017 Steppenwolf level bad. But let's talk about that end credit scene, okay? Henry Cavill as Superman makes an appearance and it was pretty cool. I was a bit disappointed because he wasn't wearing the black suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Instead, he's more so wearing the suit from Man of Steel, but it has a bit more color on the crest. And the John Williams Superman theme plays and it's pretty neat. But again, I'm a bit disappointed because I was hoping for the Hans Zimmer theme from Man of Steel. But all in all, it's good to have Henry Cavill back and when he appeared on screen my theater started cheering so that was a pretty cool experience and that's all i really want to talk about in terms of spoilers let's move on to the conclusion and wrap this video up sarah loved how big these nuts were <laughs> So I've been seeing articles and reviews saying that this is the worst comic book movie ever. And yeah, that's just not true. I think it's pretty fun, but yeah, there are several aspects that are underbaked and not explored as much as I wish they were. But when it's doing this thing as an action-packed popcorn flick, it's pretty good. Just the beginning is a bit rough and the conclusion is a bit rushed. But the entire middle section is a lot of fun, even though there are a few cringe jokes. Now, is this the DCEU game changer? No, I don't really think it is. But is it a pretty fun movie? Hell yeah, I think so. And I'm pretty certain we're gonna get a follow-up to this pretty soon. Because, well, it's The Rock. And now that DC and Warner Bros. is working with him, there ain't no way they're and let the rock go. So it's like I said earlier, overall it's an okay movie that has a lot of really good moments in the middle section. And when it's being the fun over the top action packed popcorn flick, I think it's really entertaining. But it definitely doesn't break any new ground. But yeah, Black Adam, did you guys see it? Leave a comment let me know what you think about it. And if you enjoyed the video, go and drop a like on it. And we'll give a nice big shout out to the channel members. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, click the join button down below and check out the perks. If they interest you, consider joining. Or not, it don't matter. None of this matters. Toodaloo, motherfucker.